New friends! I love making new friends. My name is Rob. I am a friend of Reverend Nathan and it's nice to meet you today if only over a screen. I'm here today to talk to you about self-control which I find a bit awkward because in a lot of my life I haven't been the most self-controlled person. Well actually perhaps that qualifies me to speak to you about it today because I'm making progress and that's what it's about. But I'm going to make this very real by talking about a real life story. I was a bit older than you, about 18, and there was a girl that I really liked. And as we started dating, early on in our relationship, she said, it's really important to me that you meet my parents and my parents meet you. Now, we were going to college on one side of the country and she lived on the other. So there weren't many opportunities to meet her family. But then one weekend came up and it was her little sister's sixth birthday party. So I arrived at this leisure centre where she'd invited all the kids from her class with their parents and there were balloons up everywhere, tables filled with food and fizzy drink, music, games, and then to my delight, in the corner, a huge bouncy castle. Now I just couldn't help myself. So I got on the bouncy castle with the kids and I started bouncing and the kids thought I was great. And I thought, this is good because if the kids like me, then my girlfriend will be impressed and hopefully so will her parents be. So I jumped up and the higher that I jumped on this bouncy castle, the more the kids thought I was great. And then on one jump, and I couldn't control myself, I jumped up about four feet off the bouncy castle and then landed awkwardly on the side of one of the ridges. I flew across the bouncy castle, wiped out the birthday girl, breaking her arm in two places, sending her off to hospital and ending the party after 30 minutes. Where was my self-control? I just wanted the world to swallow me up. I regretted it so much. Now that's a true story, but actually it represents so many areas of my life over the years where I've got into trouble by not having enough self-control. I've written a few of them down and I'm gonna get honest with you because we're new friends. When I got a bit older than you, I got into drugs. No thinking, no self-control, but just saying yes to my mates to impress them in the moment. I got into problems in relationships. I had anger problems. I was always reacting to the moment. If someone criticized me, I'd fight back, I'd shout back. There was no self-control and I really regretted it afterwards. I had self-control problems with spending. I got a job when I was a bit older than you, paper rounds then working in supermarkets, but I would buy things without really thinking about it. Very what I call impulsive, no self-control. And then I'd buy this thing which I couldn't really afford and I didn't really want it. I didn't really need it. I used to quit things that actually I enjoyed doing, but because I didn't have much self-control, if I just had a bad day playing football, oh, I'll quit it. If I was struggling to get good at a musical instrument, even though I'd enjoyed it for years, now I'll just quit it. And I didn't really think these things through. There was no self-control. I reacted to life and I never waited. In the Bible, there's a Psalm, Psalm 62. It's wonderful and it starts like this. My soul, finds rest in God alone. All my help comes from him. Now I know this to be true because when I was 25 years old, I discovered for myself a personal relationship with the living God. I didn't believe in God, I didn't believe in Jesus. But through many mistakes, I got to a point where I realized I can't go through life like this, just reacting to everything that happened. And ultimately, God was very self-controlled with me. <laughs> he didn't look at my life and fly off the handle, but he came into my life and helped me. And now he invites me through this psalm to go to him for help. My soul finds rest in God alone. I never knew that that's what I was looking for. I was never settled, which was why I always flew off the handle, which was why I was always bored, which was why I was always craving and needing the next thing to be happy, which is why I was often very angry. I was like this overinflated red balloon. I couldn't help myself. And the next thing that came along, I just reacted and life went <laughs> bang. But Paul 
pausing for Jesus. That's what self-control is. When something happens, when you want to do something, when you want to react, when everything in you says, do this, say that, get this, you pause, even for five seconds, and you say, okay, this is a pause for you, God. Show me a different way. And I've never regretted anything I've ever waited for in life. Let me say that again. I've never regretted anything that I've waited for in life, especially when I've paused for Jesus. But there are so many things I regret that I just reacted to. So Psalm 62 is this invitation from the living God to come to him for comfort, to be calmed, to be guided, to be corrected, to be satisfied and to be soothed. And in doing so, we go through life, not like that pent up red balloon, but like this, that can take the knocks of life and the temptations of life because we found rest in God and it lets some of the air out. I want to pray for you today so this can become real for you, not just in words, not just in my story, but so you can meet the living God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are self-controlled. I pray for my new friends here, that they would experience and be filled with your presence, peace and love. Thank you that you forgive us for all the ways we mess up by reacting to people and life. I pray for a new start for my friends listening here, that we would be more self-controlled with each other, with the help of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this time and thank you that you've taught us and you help us pause for Jesus.